Hello, my name's Sally Randalls and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at the Manchester Institute of Innovation Research at the Business School here at the University of Manchester. And I'm joined today by Lynn Prime. And Lynn, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. So I'm Lynn Prime and I'm a freelance communications and corporate social responsibility specialist focusing in healthcare and science sectors. But my background, my career background, um, was really principally in, in communications. Probably about two thirds of my career has been spent in communications roles. Um, after university, I moved into um, local government PR. Uh, and then from there moved um, across to Manchester Airport Company and worked in a managerial role again within the communications um, department for a, a number of years. Uh, then I moved sectors and started working for AstraZeneca, a global pharmaceutical um, company, uh, and that was my first CR role. And over the time that I worked for AstraZeneca, I held a number of UK and global CSR roles. So, Lynn, what do you think are the important characteristics and skills and competencies of the corporate social responsibility manager? Well, I think that the skills and competencies can vary um, depending on what kind of uh, business you work for and what kind of role you're doing. And obviously, something like an environmental uh, an environmentally focused role will demand, demand technical skills and qualifications. Um, but the sort of art role that I used to do, um, which was um, managing and developing community investment programmes, which were underpinned by employee in involvement, um, I think there were, it was much more around softer skills. So um, I think the first thing really I would say was about strategic thinking. Um, and being able to align CR activities to the business focus in order to be able to make the most of business, uh, the business's resources, skills, talent of employees, etc. Um, and also to be able to understand how the business was changing um, and to be able to adapt programmes to reflect this change in focus. I think another important skill um, was around project management. I think you have to be highly organised. I think you have to be good at planning and implementation across varied projects. You need to be able to work with and very often lead different teams, sometimes cross-functional teams within a business or external teams. So that really kind of calls upon the um, ability to, to lead and, and, and influence and motivate people. Um, a third area is around stakeholder management. Um, to implement successful community investment programmes, you've really got to be able to develop relationships with people, to, but to find the common ground, to build on the common ground, um, and develop the trust um, and, and, and relationships in order to be able to work together productively um, to, um, to meet your kind of programme goals. Um, also, uh, the, the programmes that I managed, um, as I said, required uh, employee involvement. So, uh, part of my role was around formal planning, formal communication, and delivering formal communications to engage employees. You know, the, the sort of communications tactics, finding what the the news hook was. Um, planning the right channels, implementing an integrated campaign to, to catch employees' attention and translate that in attention into the sort of um, behaviours that were required, whether it was volunteering or fundraising. And then I think finally, I think you need to be able to understand what range of measures are required um, and evaluation techniques, because obviously it's important to be able to, to put those measures in place to understand how your programmes are doing, are they delivering the impacts that you want, and really to feed this kind of a cycle of, of continuous improvement by constantly measuring and evaluating and making it a virtual circle of, of improvement. Len, when we think about the kinds of projects and initiatives and activities you do for a large multinational corporation like As AstraZeneca, can you give us some examples of uh, practical activities and projects that you did? Um, one of the key programmes that I worked on when I was employed by AstraZeneca was the Global Young Health Programme. 
this was a program that focused on the primary prevention of non-communicable diseases. So diseases like cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart and respiratory disease. Um, and this program sat very well within the, the company's um, business remit of improving health. So the, the, the program started in, in 2010 and it was running in 18 countries. It was implemented with two external partners, um, an American university which provide a research component to the program and also a international children's charity um, which helped along with the AstraZeneca markets to implement some of the on the ground programs. It focused on the risk factors that would lead to non that often lead to non-communicable diseases uh, in later life. So things like alcohol abuse, tobacco use, lack of exercise and, and unhealthy eating and tried to address those so that those didn't become ingrained behaviours. That's really interesting, Lynn. And how is it that a large company like AstraZeneca with all its many functions and the, the size, the number of employees, how does it translate its values into policies and how, how does it actually do that in practice? Well, I think the, the corporate responsibility manager is, is just kind of one part of the jigsaw, but obviously they're the person that's responsible for helping the company find its focus, you know, what, what is the right area that would fit with the business purpose and where, where the business can obviously use its expertise and contact and knowledge to deliver benefits, sustainable and measurable benefits. So I think their role is to help the company find that focus and to put in place the processes and systems which drive that across the business. So for example, um, action planning, uh, in setting kit, helping uh, managers, individual functional managers to set KPIs for their, for their uh, regions and the whole reporting process. So I think they're very much the kind of the linchpin that holds together um, you know, the processes and the people that are kind of delivering the corporate responsibility outputs within the business functions. But obviously a key part of that is the endorsement from senior management, having the policies in policies and codes of conduct in place which ensure that employees globally act as the standards that are required of them. KPIs, that's key performance indicators. Can you give us some examples of KPIs in, in, in your area of work? So, for example, um, with the Young Health Programme, when I worked on that, we expected our um, markets, local markets, who were implementing local programmes to report twice a year. And some of the standards were, for example, the number of young people reached, uh, the number of uh, frontline healthcare providers who were trained, the number of young people who were trained to pass on the message about adolescent health to other people. Those were the sorts of indicators, so very kind of hard, you know, measurable output related indicators. And, and, and that helped us um, to, to piece together the value that the programme was um, providing its in entirety. That's really interesting, Lynn, about how the company works with its CSR role in terms of internal communications and processes that you put in place to, to manage that, the processes and systems that you put in place. So what about, if you like, inside out, um, the different kinds of organisations that a company like AstraZeneca would work with and how you decide which organisations to work with and prioritise your issues? How does that work in practice? Well, I think the companies, large companies, have a, a, a you know, a, inevitably, I think, usually want to be transparent about their activities. So part of the corporate responsibility process is about reporting your activities to the external world. Um, very often it tends to be part of the annual report uh, and the activity, uh, activity was also um, validated by uh, an independent assurance body that would look at the evidence that has been put forward and test it to understand whether it's right, whether it's robust, whether it, um, you know, whether the, the outcomes are delivered against the targets that have been set. So actually there is confidence for, from an external stakeholder point of view that what the company is saying is actually accurate and, and can be reported as such. 
And I think another way in which large companies can um, demonstrate their um, determination to Im improve on community issues in a sustainable way is by um, subscribing to particular in indices and indexes. For example, um, there's an access to medicine index that I know was important for AstraZeneca. Um, or So it, th again, that's another way that a company can hold itself up to external scrutiny and can be judged against its peers in terms of whether it's doing what it say it's doing and, and, and how good it is in terms of you know, what the market is delivering. So finally, m thinking about the people watching this interview and watching this MOOC, what advice would you give for anyone thinking of going into the kind of career that, that you've been in and, and, and what kind of things would they have to do to get into CSR? Well, I, I think they need to think about what aspect of CSR they're, they're most interested in, so whether it's the social or the economic or the environmental legs of it. And I think particularly if it was, say, the environmental part that interests them, they would probably need to consider doing a, an environmentally related degree um, because obviously that's going to take more technical skills than something like the area that I worked in, which was more around the, the social part of CSR, the community investment, because that required more communication skills. Um, but I do think a degree is a, is a good starting point. Um, working for a large company does give you a good overview of corporate responsibility of how it's implemented within a an organization and the processes and systems that underpin it um, so I, I think that's a good good place to be um, alternatively you could think about working in an agency um, which perhaps provides services planning um, research services to large organizations if they're thinking about particular setting up a particular project for example they might need some additional support or expertise so that could be an opening as well but th I know that for example in the UK there is um, a competency framework that's been developed around CSR uh, and that's been uh, implemented by the Institute of Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability and that's not only to guide new starters within the profession but also to help people as they track all the way through the, their career and really ensure that they uh, continue with their professional development to make sure that they stay ahead of, of new trends and new developments within CSR. Lynn, that's really helpful and really interesting. Thank you so much for your time today.